Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to pop on and talk about spiritual warfare with you. I'm not gonna talk about specifically what it is. If you clicked on this video, you probably already know and you're just looking for help with it. So I'm gonna mainly talk about how to battle spiritual warfare and demonic attacks with the word of God. So he literally gives us instructions in the Bible, guys. So we are gonna go through those verses together. After I was saved, I didn't know anything about this and I really struggled. So I just asked that you would send this to someone who is newly saved or born again and doesn't know what's going on or is stressed out and doesn't know, you know, exactly how to battle with the word of God. And of course, it's always great to remind ourselves as believers what we need to be doing. And a lot of these things can be done every single day. It's just a matter of adjusting the way that you're praying. And like I said, the Lord gives us instruction. So I have five verses today that have helped me. And I realized that I was already doing these things just because once you're filled with the Holy Spirit, he kind of just guides you. But I had stumbled across a video by Pastor Gene Kim, who I really love. And I'll link his video below and it's all about battling spiritual warfare. And when I went through it, I was like, okay, I've been doing a lot of these things. And he's like here backing it up with scripture. So I'm going to share those verses with you. Definitely go watch his video because it's always good to hear from an actual pastor. I'm just here as a fellow believer to encourage you and from someone who has experienced a ton of spiritual warfare. Honestly, guys, it's just part of my life and it's part of every Christian's life. It's been intense for me. And I, you know, when I'm going through it, I'm always praying like, God, how can I help somebody else get through something like this? You know, use this for good, use this struggle that I'm going through for good. So here we are today. The last week I've experienced a ton of spiritual warfare. It has been probably one of the most intense weeks I've ever had. And I was like, I have to share this. I have to help people with this because we are in a spiritual battle every single, every single day, every single day. So let's jump into it. So the first verse comes from Mark 9, 29. And this is specific to the KJV Bible. I know a lot of people have a lot of feelings about the different translations and whatnot. And it says, And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. And a lot of the other Bibles just have by prayer. And that's unfortunate because fasting is incredibly powerful. And we're not going to talk about, you know, whether Christians can be demonized or possessed and all that stuff. I, you know, only the Lord knows. There's so much controversy with that. But what we're saying here is that fasting is clearly powerful and fasting clearly fights against the enemy, regardless of what you believe. It needs to be a part of every Christian walk. I know a lot of us struggle with it. I have struggled with it before, but I will say that it has been a game changer in my life and in my battle. And, and I've always come out victorious when I fast, always. James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. And what does fasting do? It draws you closer to God. So the closer you're getting to God, the better you're able to battle this warfare. And honestly, the enemy wants you to think that you can't fast, that you can't do it, that you know, that you're too tired, you're too this, you're too that. He wants you to stay away from God as much as possible because he knows the closer we get to God, the more that he, he can't be involved, he has to go. Fasting will bring you that much closer to the Lord. If you're really struggling and you've done everything, you've prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing is changing and you still feel like you're being beaten down fast, even just for one day try it. And you can do different types of fast, guys. You don't have to just do water. I know that's very difficult for people and it is difficult, of course, but there's also the Daniel fast where you can just eat vegetables and fruits and water. And I know a lot of people like that too. And I've done that and I've had huge breakthroughs doing the Daniel fast. So do the best that you can. The Lord knows that you're trying and he will be there right with you, right? And another thing I want to say that was not in Gene Kim's video that I like to do is if I'm really, really struggling and I'm having a hard time praying, I will just put on worship music and let that play and fill my home. Or I will let the Bible, like a Bible app, just play the Bible audibly so the word of God just fills my home as well. A lot of times I'm rejuvenated by that and then I'm able to pray properly. It's just nice to have those things playing in your home. Um, instead of this, all the secular music and, and even, you know, YouTubers and podcasters, like it's all great, but there's nothing better than the word of God and worship music and just praising him. So if you don't have the energy to really get in the spirit and pray, start with just listening. Or if you have a partner, have them pray scripture over you, have them read the Bible to you. That's always helpful too. Now, the next three scriptures I'm going to talk about all kind of go together and it's the way that you're praying. The Lord literally told us how to pray, right? <laughs> but he also gives us instructions too with our prayer life. So let's go to the second one and that is Revelations 12, 9 through 11. 
The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power in the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. So what does this say? It's saying that they triumphed over Satan by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of Christ. So when you're praying, always every single day guys this this should not just be when you're in a hard season and battling spiritual warfare this should be every day praying the blood of christ over yourself and over your situation asking him to cleanse you with his blood that is super powerful and i think a lot of times we forget to do that now along with that is luke 10 17 and that is to use the full name of the lord jesus christ when you're praying so it goes together so praying the blood of christ over yourself but using his full name Lord Jesus Christ, not just Jesus, right? And the scripture says, the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. His name holds so much power. And I know you know that because you're probably a Christian, but utilize his name in your prayers as much as possible and utilize his full name. And Pastor Gene Kim goes further into it. So I'll let you watch his video, but in number four also has to do with your prayer life. So 1 John 1, 7 through 9. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, pur purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We need to be confessing and asking for forgiveness every time we pray, truly, repenting, renouncing. So through prayer and confession, not only are we praying the blood of Christ over ourselves, we're using his name in our prayers, but we're also confessing. So whatever you're battling, give it to him confess it confess it all confess all the feelings maybe you believed a lie from the enemy maybe you believed a lie that you're not enough confess that to the Lord and say Lord I'm sorry that's not true because I know what you say about me I am enough because I am your daughter or your son and when you're confessing you're confessing these things and you're asking the Lord to cleanse you of this uncleanliness and unrighteousness that is in you and if you're not sure what to confess or what is going on in there you just know that you're being attacked and you're not well ask the lord to search your heart and search your mind and he'll reveal to you what what it is that's how he usually does it for me like if i just ask him if i'm, str I'm really struggling and i'm like god you know just can you reveal can you can you search my heart here and and reveal to me what needs to be worked through with you, what needs to be cleansed, right? Because none of us are perfect, we're all sinners. So we need to be cleansed of something every single day, guys. Every single day. We cannot go through a, f a single day without sinning. It just, it, we're human beings, it's in our nature. We came from Adam and Eve. We just, we're, we're sinners. So make sure that confession is a part of your daily prayer life and that will help you battle. When you bring things to light, the Lord can redeem it. When you bring shame and guilt to light, you know, he, he'll cleanse it, he'll cleanse it. He will, he will free you from that. Now, I couldn't do this video without talking about Ephesians and putting on the full armor of God, right? Ephesians 6, 11 through 13. The reason we need to put on the full armor of God every day is because the enemy is always looking for cracks in your foundation. He's looking for cracks in your life, in your walk with the Lord, with your, with your walking with the spirit. He's looking for little holes he can get in. You know, how can I make her feel bad? How can I make her feel like crap? How can I bring her down today? How can I pull her away from the Lord? How can I distract her or him? How can I get in with just a simple, silly lie? Just like the one I said before, like you are not enough. If you believe that lie, man, it's like everything comes crashing down, right? Because we let it in, right? We don't even realize we're letting it in, okay? But we can redeem it. We can with the Lord. So let, let, I don't want this video to be too long. So let's just quickly go through Ephesians 6. So the Lord tells us to put on the belt of truth every day. And so what does that mean? So it means to not believe the lies of the enemy. Put on the belt of truth. What does God say about us? What are his promises? One thing I know for, sh for certain that helps when you are really, really struggling is to focus on God's promises on eternal life, on the crowns that you'll be wearing in heaven. Shift your focus from your problems in your battle to him. Shift it all to him, cast it on him, and focus on all of the beautiful things that he's promised you. And that is the belt of truth, believing in him and what he says. He also tells us to put on the breastplate of righteousness. You know, he wants us to be an instrument of righteousness. How can you do that? Well, you can confess. 
and ask for forgiveness for the sins that's in your heart. Ask for a pure heart. Ask him to purify your heart, renew your mind, renew your spirit every single day. And the next, he wants our feet to be fitted with readiness from the gospel of peace. So are we spreading the word of God every day? Are we are we living out his mission for us, his calling for us? Are we serving him? You know, that's putting on the armor of God every day when we're serving him, when we're his servant, with his good and faithful servant, right? And that leads us to the shield of faith, putting on the shield of faith every day, which shields us against the darts of the enemy. Your faith is will get you through this life, that it will get you through. It'll help you battle any any problem, any issue, any attack from the enemy. Your faith will pull you through always. So put on the shield of faith in the helmet of salvation, of course. So the helmet of salvation, knowing where you're going when you pass away, knowing that you're going to be with the Lord Jesus when you die. Putting on the helmet of salvation helps because you can focus on, like I said before, the promises from the Lord that you have eternal life with him. That promise is powerful. And that helmet of salvation helps us to focus on that instead of the enemy. And then of course, the sword of the spirit. So the word of God, we need to be in the word of God every single day. We, As Christians, we all know that, but we really need to make it a priority. And I know it's very easy to get distracted, especially if you have a lot going on, you have kids and all that, you know, who is number one? Sometimes we forget and we have to be reminded. And sometimes when we get reminded, it's hard and it's it's not fun. So you might as well put them first every day instead of having to learn that lesson. I know I've had to learn it. I've had, I, you know, I've made things idols before and I've been humbled very, very quickly <laughs> that I've been forgetting to be present with the Lord. Yeah, I may have been spending time with him, but it, I wasn't present and I wasn't really putting him first, right? And I was really focused on what was in front of me and not on him. So being in the word of God helps you to stay focused on him. And it's our only offensive weapon, guys. He, it's the sword. It's our offense. We need to be, like I said, praying scripture over ourselves every day. Pray Psalm 91 over yourself. That's great for spiritual warfare. I have a video that repeats Psalm 91 for an hour. If you don't know what else to play and you don't have the energy, just start playing it and listening and just internalize it, internalize it. That you are taking refuge under the Lord's wings, right? And of course, Paul also reminds us that we need to be praying in the spirit in every occasion. So not just when we're happy and we're like, thanks God for this blessing. We need to be praying when we're battling, when we're struggling, when we're down, when we don't know where to turn, we need to be praying. I really hope this video helps you out. I know that these verses have helped me battle spiritual warfare and you know any demonic attacks or anything from the enemy. When I utilize these five things that I talked about, these five scriptures, it's a game changer. And I know that it'll help you. And I ask that you would comment below if you start to utilize these scriptures in your life and also share what has worked for you as well. If you could, that would be wonderful. And so the last thing is, I just want to um, take a second to pray for you all. And just, you know, I just pray that the, that the Lord is in this video and that the Lord has blessed this video and all of you guys. Um, so heavenly father, I just Thank you so much for, for who you are and your character and for bringing this video onto YouTube today. And, you know, Lord, we just raise you up today and we just praise you and we honor you for how good you are and how you are always faithful to us and always giving us mercy and grace, even when we don't deserve it, Lord. And you've, you've been so kind to bless us with these instructions on how to live and how to, how to battle the enemy, God. You, you are so gracious to do that for us. And Lord, you just, you deserve to be praise at sunrise and sunset and every second and every hour in between lord and and we know that no matter what struggle we're going through we have you we have you to cling to we have the armor of god and we place it on ourselves every single day lord in your name we pray we pray your blood over us lord jesus christ every single day we pray it over our situations we confess to you what we're going through and we know that you will make our paths straight lord we know because we have such faith in you as our heavenly father and our great loving, kind Father. In Jesus' name, I pray all this. Amen.